Hello and welcome to this tutorial video where I will be showing you how to uh, program and operate uh, this color effects generator uh, that I have uh, figured out in Grand MA2 on PC. First of all, as always, you can just pick a color on the left side with the color picker and we'll be using the LED strips, particularly in this example. So I'm going to set the background color of my LED strips to a magenta. This means that the LED strips, when I'm not running the effect generator, will always be in uh, the magenta color, right? So I have the intensity on my LED strips up and the color selected as magenta. If I pop over into my layout view where I've selected a few of these uh, pixels of the LED strips, we can see, yep, they are indeed in magenta in my layout view here. The real magic is with this other fader that I have selected. It's the green selected fader here uh, that is labeled as Effect Generator Go. This is a temp fader that allows me to fade in and out at my whim uh, the effect that I've generated with the other screen. So if I have this temp fader at zero, it means they're going to be magenta. And if I bring that all the way up to full, it means the effect is going to be running and the magenta will be disappeared into the background until uh, which time I release the temp fader down to zero. This means that I can select between uh, any of my colors that I have in this Q stack here. Um, so I have color one and color two. Those are the two colors that the effect is going to be chasing between or using as the high and the low values. So we could do like a cyan and a pink. And if I bring my uh, effect all the way down, we are still at magenta. And as I bring the fader up, we are now chasing with an effect uh, between cyan and pink. And this interface is all live. So if I decide to change the number of groups to none, the groups will change to none. If I decide to change to a ramp down waveform instead of a PWM, it, it changes live as I'm doing it. And again, um, as I fade the temp fader in and out, it's going between the background color, in this case, magenta, but I could switch it to whatever else I wanted. If I wanted the LED strips to be yellow in the background, um, I could do that. And then as I fade down, the fixtures go back to yellow. As I fade up, they go into the effect. Pretty cool. This top row of buttons, that says like spots active, wash active, wash to active, strip active. That is a different, uh, that's like a way of choosing which fixtures I want to have in my effect when I uh, bring that fader up. So if I just want the LED strips to be in this queue, then I have just the strip active uh, indicator on. If I wanna also have my spots uh, and let's say my LED twos, I usually use those for like truss warmers, things like that. Then that means that when I bring that fader up and down, the other fixture types will also chase between those two colors in the same manner as the rest of uh, uh, this is dictating below. So you can imagine if I have uh, my entire rig selected as on, 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 and I'm going between blue and orange, uh, as I fade this fader up, the entire rig will, uh, will do the same color chase. So let's uh, delve into how exactly this is constructed. First, let's talk about the color picker selection, which is choosing between color one and color two. As you can see, when I just click through this, uh, this sequence on the screen, it is just uh, allowing me to pick which fic or which um, color I want to be the low value, and then the color two is going to be the high value. Since in MA, you can only really realistically have uh, a high value and a low value for waveforms unless you get into some macro writing that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. But keep in mind, none of the information in this entire uh, executor button pa page actually has any control data in it. These are all just placeholders for lines of command entry. So if I click on, or if I edit this color one sequence, for example, none of these cues have any color information in them actually. All they are is they are just command cues to copy a preset. 
So if we look at, this is for color one, if we look at the yellow queue, which is called yellow, but actually doesn't have any yellow information in it, all it is doing is telling the console, copy preset 4.4 at preset 4.100 slash M for merge. So let's look over at our color presets that I have on this page as well. We can see that our preset 4.4 .4 is indeed yellow and our preset 4.100 is uh, this, it says lime number two, but this is actually just called low effects. I'm going to change the label for this so it's a little easier to understand. So what I'm doing when I'm clicking through these color one colors is I am taking a color from this preset, these global color presets, and copying it from the slot that it's originally in and merging it into this low effects uh, color preset, which is preset 100. This preset 100 is the low value in each of these uh, five effects that you see over to the right over here. So if I edit each one of these effects, you will see that the low value is the low effects or 4.100 and the high value is high effects or 4.101. That's true for all of these. So these five different effects that I have here for each different type of fixture are just referencing the low effects and the high effects values. And all the color one and the color two buttons up here are doing are just copy merging preset data from uh, one of my you know basic 15 color presets into each of the color slots to chase between. And keep in mind what's happening when I am activating or deactivating each of these different fixture types is it is uh, essentially changing the effect from a template effect to a selective effect because selective effects, when they are stored to a sequence, they will auto update. So that is how this whole thing can work is because those selective effects when they're selective and not templates are stored into my effect generator queue on that fader. But since they have all been transformed into template effects, when I turn them off with the activate buttons, then it no longer does anything when I bring the fader up only when I click on led strip on, does it change the effect into a selective effect, at which point I can then bring the fader up and the chase or effect begins. I'm using chase and effect interchangeably because I'm bad at remembering uh, to differentiate between the two, but it's an effect. All of these are effects. I don't use chasers in MA at all. This means that I can also use uh, my playback macros in conjunction with these colors. So instead of me having to click through all the colors to find what I want, I can simply say, go to Q, select green, go to Q, select magenta. And now my effect runs with those two colors. So let's look at this LED strip on macro. So line one is for blind edit. This is a pretty basic step for any of these live updating things. Anytime you're messing around with uh, storing and uh, updating effects live uh, for tricky things like this, you should always use blind edit. Then it goes ahead and clears the selection out of my programmer and selects group 15, which is my symmetrical LED strip selection. So I've talked about symmetrical selections before in other videos, but just as a refresher, uh, when you have a layout view of all of your fixtures, if you select them symmetrically, all the effects that you use with wings from then on will look more symmetric than if you just select them left to right. So that's uh, what group 15 does. Group 15, please, selects my symmetrical uh, fixture order the next line is the tricky part for storing as a selective effect. So I've selected in line three, my select my fixture selection order. Then in line four of this macro, it's saying store effect 1.666.1 through 1.666.5. 
So what exactly does this mean? I'm not exactly sure what the, the one prefix does. I just know that you have to have it in order to store the effects this way. But 666 is my effect number for my LED strip effect. And dot one after the 666 is line one. So line one through line five in this LED strip effect, I want to do what I'm automating is I'm automating this take selection button. So that is what this LED strip on macro does is it just takes selection with the symmetrical effect or with the symmetrical selection order. Then from here, the other options that we see in the interface are, you know, things like changing the waveform shape, the wings uh, amount, the direction of the effect, number of groups. All of these things are just doing that same editing of the effect line. So if I look at this uh, group sequence here where I can choose um, whichever number of groups I want in the effect, all I have to look over is at this command line and see, okay, assign and then generated effects. Those are, uh, if I put that into my command line, we can pull up and look exactly what that is. So generated effects are effect 663 through 667. And those are my five effects that I have stored to that fader. So what I'm saying to the console when I say assign generated effects slash groups equals four is that in all of these effects, even if they're just template, which won't run actively when I bring the fader up, it's going to change uh, all of these lines, lines one through five, you can see we have our five lines here uh, for all of our color mix attributes. It's changing this groups column, right? So that is all that this button is doing. So if I switched it to 12 here, we can see it says assign those effects groups equals 12. And if we go through each one of these effects, we can see indeed our group uh, groups has been changed to 12 in all of them. It's the same with uh, blocks. It's the same with wings. All it's doing is assigning the effect and modifying the, uh, the different lines, right? So I've just basically taken a shortcut to going in and manually editing all of these by using macros. And those macros are triggered with these sequences so that I don't have to uh, type a lot of stuff in. I can just quickly say I want to chase between indigo and uh, correct to uh, just to say indigo and white. We'll do a sine wave. Now we'll do pulse width, four wings, reverse. Then when I bring the fader up, it works. And that's the basics of my color effects generator. I hope this hasn't been too confusing. I know there's a lot of stuff packed into here, but uh, if you watch this video a couple of times and take note of what you see on screen and actually do read closely into the effect line uh, or the, the macros that I showed on screen, uh, you'll be able to figure out uh, how to do this as well. It is a really fun little exercise in uh, macro editing and, uh, or excuse me, writing and effect editing. I've also gone ahead and in the description below this video, included the links for the resources that I use to uh, figure out what the different assign options are for the effects. Uh, it's on the ACT Lighting website or ACT Lighting, whatever you want to say. They're the North American distributor for MA2 products, and they have a lot of good resources online. So if you are ever stumped on what the different assign functions do in the command line, and what you can actually automate through the command line for effect editing, make sure to check out the links in the description. And once again, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any ideas for future videos or if you've seen anything that you just don't quite understand and you wanna know how to do it, I would love to show you how. In any case, if you haven't had a chance yet, make sure to check out my video logs from my various uh, touring and local production escapades. Uh, I've gone ahead and thrown a link to one of my favorite videos up on the screen. Make sure to check that out and check out my other programming tips videos. And until the next video, thanks so much for watching. I will see you later.